<coughs> Welcome. Yeah, here we are. Alright, I think we're online. Yay, I think we're online. So this poor thing is not like, connected to the internet anymore. And I still don't know why. And I have to get in there. Uh, I think the only solution is, like, get in there and dig with it. <laughs> I don't know, I, it's, not on the, it's not on the Wi-Fi. Yeah, it fixes itself. For some reason, audio is always busted on this setup here, but it only lasts a few minutes. All right, yeah. So the teletype is it's having problems, poor little thing. And I don't know what happened. Um, I mean, it's still totally functional, or at least as functional as ever. It has input and it has output. And the ribbon is getting a little grey. So at some point I'll swap the ribbon for a new one and re-ink this or something, maybe. Uh, this is my favorite ribbon. This is the little, uh, the silk one. Uh, anyway, but when it boots up, it's not on the internet. Let's spin this around. Uh, spin it around here. You see, yeah, I've got a sign on the wall now. <laughs> Yeah. So um one ninety two, one sixty eight, dot one hundred dot two. That's not my Wi Fi. That's USB zero. Oh okay, so it's got SSH over USB. Because this is the coral thing, so it has plenty of USB ports. Except they're USB C. And I need to go dig in a box to see if i got a USB-C cable lying around still. Which I'm sure I have. So anyway, I think I'm going to leave it running. But I can't run like, I can't run, run the Twitch bot. And I can't like, do anything useful on it. Um, so anyway, I'm going to step forward by another 10 years and I'm still like a, obsessed with this plotter. That we've been tinkering with. So let's point back at the wall, spin this back around, find the table where we have the water, and let's adjust the camera to point that again. So this is still fun. That has to be fun. Ah, there we are fixed in place. Um, so yeah, the uh, HP pen plotter, I've loaded a pen in there as you can see. Um, 
hi everyone, say hi. Um, welcome, thanks for thanks for thanks. Ah, there we are, we're back again. Yeah. Oh, anyway, we're back on. Um, I think my little my little MacBook is struggling to keep up, and I don't know why. Um, anyway, <laughs> back again. So what I'm going to do here? <coughs> yeah, this poor little machine. Um, just needs more grunt. Like the shell is completely failing. It's because OBS is busy. Um, it's like 33 percent of my CPU is going on in this little streaming, and nothing much is happening. But it's it's working really really hard. So anyway, let me talk through this while I try to diagnose what I can do about performance on this poor little thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. I could go sudo kill dash nine. That seems like a oh no, I can't even do that. Bear with me. <laughs> I can't do anything on this machine. It's really terrible. Anyway, uh, chat amongst yourselves. <laughs> yeah, in this um, in this bin directory, there's this L system thing, and even navigating to the bin directory is like crazy, crazy, crazy slow. Um, I refactored this just an hour ago on my way home, and. Um, Actually, I refactored some of it yesterday and then did a little cleanup and centered the pictures. And I've also created like this subdirectory called L that has some pretty pictures in it. So I want to print these. I've tried printing them on, uh, what's it called? Postscript. And that kind of worked. Um, so I'm going to try print them on the plotter. <laughs> because then we'll see what happens. Um, so, let's do try that. I'm going to switch across to here. I seem to have lost the camera. Oh, no. 
you know why I've lost the camera? You know why I've lost the camera? Because the battery ran out. Oopsie. Well, this is one of those days. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I think, uh, yeah, without, I mean, I've got this little webcam thing here, and that doesn't need a battery. But my camcorder does. And usually I'd carry a spare, and I've failed to carry a spare. So I think, yeah, we're stuck without a camera. Which means I think actually I'm just gonna... Ooh, ooh, I'm gonna solve it. They are rapidly acquired, fully charged battery, back in action. Now, let's go on here. This is in this bin directory, and I'm SSH'd into the plotter, or into that Raspberry Pi that runs the plotter. So that's where I wanted to be. And so now I'm going to say, uh, move this up a little. Can I move this? Oh, I guess not. I'll move it there. Um, yeah. If I go L system uh, file L slash and then one of these. Now the one that I want to try printing is um, uh, which one? Is fan out because of my mate Peter who sent me it. So I've got to print it for him, and for me. Um, and it's going to print HPGL when this thing stops beach balling. You can't see the beach ball. You are so lucky. There is a beach ball right here. So, and um, don't know what happened there. So let's see. Uh, can you see that? Nope, you're looking at the wrong thing. <laughs> this is me trying to, like. Yeah. Okay. Lot one dot local. Oh my goodness, this poor machine. What have I done to it? They are, okay. <laughs> Alright, here we are, bin. And, um, what I just did was I, um, I said print L system, which you can't even see because my thing is like that. So I said L system, fan out to the A dot plot. Let's see, did that work? Um, a dot plot. Looks like HPGL. But this is completely rewritten, so let's let's go test it. Um, LP. Oh, I don't know how to do LP again. I think do I even have a default printer installed? I don't have I don't have any printing machinery installed. Okay, well that's cool. Of course I'm on the printer. I can't run the printer from the printer. I might have to install cups on <laughs> No, I might have to... No, I might. Oh, no. I don't want to install cups on this thing. It's meant to be a cupsless thing. <laughs> Alright. Let's go back here. Uh, so I'm on my actual Mac. Let's go into this directory, bin, L system, file L slash fanout, 
and let's plot it. Okay, so there's the file. Now to figure out how do I plot, I can't remember, so I'm gonna have to go here. Luckily the plotter itself has a web page, yeah, which is called, as you'd hope for, penplot1.local. And it has all the instructions. And the instructions include how to set up the paper, and there we are. How to plot. I should make this an alias so that I remember it next time. LP dash D and then the printer name dash O raw so that it um, so that it's raw. I could print L system directly. That's my next thing. But let's try this one. Uh, LP with raw output a dot plot. Ready? Ready? All right, why is it plotting? <laughs> why is my Raspberry Pi not plotting? Okay, well, let's go into the plotter. Because uh, <laughs> I want this to be, I don't know if Ted totally agrees, I want this to be like on all the time and then everybody in the brickyard can discover it. We'll have that conversation about like, am I going to leave this on 24-7? Right. Because at some point I want to. Okay. But I want to be careful of vintage hardware when I do. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Hey, it plotted. Yes. Woo. I think it was just like stuck in the in the queue for a long time, but it's plotting beautifully. I think we're going to zoom in. Uh, there it is. We can zoom in even further than that. Yeah, this works. So these are fractals, and there's a little language that describes how the fractal. Mm -hmm. And um, so yeah, this is a little phone fractal. I've got a whole collection of these. That's awesome. And hopefully these are. So the last thing that I worked on was um, trying to center the print in the paper. Mm -hmm. So I think I've got the units right here, but we'll see when this one prints whether it did or not. Because then these are like uh, framing quality print. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> and I dated the product too. I I uh, looked at the uh, the photograph I had of the chips down here, right. and they had date coded eighty five oh five, and then this one here is date coded eighty five twenty five. So. This is a 1985 machine. <laughs> Almost as old as me. <laughs> Wishful thinking there. <laughs> older than my kids. This machine is, is older than my children. Yeah. It's scary, scary, scary. Yeah. And it's plotting beautifully. It's really plotting beautifully. I'm very pleased with this one. Hang on. Is that my wire cap? It's funny because somebody so somebody asked like, are you running this on vintage computing 
hardware. But no, I actually don't have any vintage computing hardware. I don't have a MacBook, but that doesn't really count. It's, it's, uh, no, all my computers are 21st century machines. But the peripherals there are. This is a good print. I think this is a beautiful print. So Peter, if you're watching, uh, I don't think you're watching right now, but if you come back and watch, um, you gotta. Um, I tell you what, I'll do you. I'll do you a deal, Peter. Um, let's meet up the weekend of May fourth or whatever for VCF East, which is in your part of the world, in Wall, New Jersey, and um, I'll give you this print. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, Peter I used to work with um, suggested this pattern and um, uh, sent me the little piece of the little snippet of L code that produces it. And sure enough, it is really, really pretty. And this one is only a few iterations. Um, if I look at the file that produces it, um, it says start with letter F and then the rule is that a letter F which is a forward line turns into a forward line and then a left turn and two forward lines and then back again and then a right turn and two forward lines and then back again and then another forward line and a couple back and forwards and so then it iterates that only four times because I think this expansion is like pretty huge some of these things you have to iterate a dozen times to get a full like image, um, but this one expands super quickly. Um, yeah, and it's plotting. And there's lots of pen up work. So the refactoring and the code that I did, I was I was wondering how to do. Um, so, I mean, the way that these that these codes work is like F has a special meaning. It means to go forward. Um, square bracket means basically push where you are at the current point onto a stack. Left square bracket means pop the stack. Plus and minus mean turn left and turn right by the angle. And then most most any other character is kind of just undefined. Um, if I look at uh, this one, which is, I think, the next one I want to... Oh, no. This is the next one I want to go print. The Hilbert one. Um, the letter X and Y don't print. They're non-printing. They're basically just placeholders for state. But they do swap into each other. Yes, I totally solved the flushing problem. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. Where was I? I'm going to come and show you how I solved the flushing problem. <laughs> but my mind is a sieve, as always. It must be like midday, midweek blues or something. Um, I was going to say something about this language. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I know. So you can make up all your all your like command characters, and what I wanted to do was add a command character that says uh, change color, because we've got six pens here. So I could add a command that says like go pick up the next pen. Um, and sure enough, I think people have done this on some of the LSS system implementations already. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, um, but the problem then, if you say go pick up the next pen, is like what do you do? if you've got a hundred pen changes in rapid succession. So I refactored the way that it drew the lines so that basically I can keep track of all of the continuous lines. And then if I wanted to, I could sort them by pen color so that then it wouldn't have to swap pens a million times if you told it to. Because there's only six pens, right? So. Uh, I could have it actually efficiently do multicolored plot, which would be cool. Um, anyway, 
Yeah, yeah, so did I solve the flushing problem? I totally solved the flushing problem, and it's really clumsy, and uh, I'll show you what the, the result was. Um, in here, so the way that this prints is this print HPGL script is called by the print server, and uh, it does all the conversion, basically, converts everything to HPGL. Uh, whatever format you've got. And then I wrote this HPGL cat script. And this HPGL cat is just a little Python script that basically says copy that file to the device. But it does it super carefully. <laughs> and then. Um, so, yeah. And then the. Uh, the the cat HPGL script says, um, let's read from the source and use the Python serial library to, to, to talk to the destination. And we just read a byte at a time. So that's easy enough. But then every like 100 bytes or so, whatever this count is, I forget. Uh, oh, it's quite, quite a lot, 800 bytes. If I've done a whole bunch of stuff and sent it to the printer, then go get the status from the printer. And if it's an error, then print that into the log. So it's going to send a bunch of stuff to the printer. Then it's going to check the printer for status and um, end up. Um, I think at the very end of the thing, then it. What did I do at the end? I didn't even do anything special. I just did this, like, get status every so often. Um, but the special thing about status is it writes this control command to the printer that says, tell me how big your buffer is. And actually, then it does another one, which, tell, which is, like, tell me what errors you've got. But this one, um, the plotter waits until the buffer's empty before replying. And that seemed to do the trick. So it's a clumsy, horrible hack, um, relying on a not very well documented feature of the plotter itself. And I'm sure that it's papering over the real source of the problem. But it seems to do the trick, <laughs> so I'm quite happy with that. And we're coming close to the end of this. We're coming real close to the end. And it is beautiful. There we are, we're done. Oh, thank you. Put the pen away as well. Nice. Now that is quite the thing. And it's almost centered on the paper. It's not really centered, but it's almost centered. And so I could center that in a frame quite easily. And uh, that's for Peter, I guess. Yay. Oh, yay, yay, you've been making progress on your wheel rider. Um, absolutely, fantastic. Tell me about it. Um, do, you, do you have the actual hardware? I mean, that's the first question is, if you're doing a wheel rider, I assume you have a wheel rider and, uh, and a plan, because that's probably like, the two essential things to start with. I sold a, bread, a board last night to Man in the Middle of the Bus. Yay! Awesome. But this is not even like an ASCII machine, right? It's like some bizarro encoding because they didn't need to connect it to a computer, right? It's like a... Uh, it's a... typewriter first and electronic second, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be such an incredible project. But Daisy Wheels, oh, beautiful, beautiful. So I'm going to do the, another one of these prints. I'm going to print the... Uh, uh, what's this one called? No, really? The data just tells it how to turn the wheel. And... Yeah. 
I mean, the teletype kind of did that. It tells it how to turn the wheel, and it's mechanical linkage, but it's like at least there's logical separation between like the character set and and what it's doing. Wow. Yeah, but it's only like peak bits, right? So you can just do a mapping table, I guess. Now, I'm going to print the uh, Hilbert curve. And um, I need to say dash dash file. Print the Hilbert curve to this plot file. And then plot the plot file. And let's see if this one comes out nice. The Hilbert curve, I mean, I want to graduate to mazes on this plotter eventually. Um, I wonder, it's taking a little while. I think and maybe the reason it takes a while to set up is um, it, it copied the file into the queue, but then when it gets there, it's going to run it through. No, it's not going to run it through any processing, it's like it's HTTPGL. But somehow it has to queue it. Yep, there we are. Yay! And then it has to up upload it at like uh, 4800 board or something. Alright. We are printing a Hilbert space filling curve, and this is going super fast. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Whoa, look at the speed of that plotting action. has potential to be really interesting. Um, I want to do mazes someday. This thing. Oh yeah, you can see the whole surroundings of my, of my setup here in the picture. Uh, this is my work desk. There's a plotter. There's a uh, little wave text signal generator just sitting there, which was a generous donation from a friendly neighbor. And it has the most beautiful buttons. And uh, then there's like, the rest of my uh, things like paper supplies, um, a nail board for winding ribbons, which we'll need at some point because I'm going to take the teletype ribbon, put one on here, put one on here, wind them off, rewind my ribbons. Uh, paper supplies for like fancy paper. Uh, teletype roll for a not very fancy paper. Uh, finished artwork, printed frames ready to sell or hang on the wall or something. Yeah. Anyway, all of it, all of the above. Let's go back here and see what the what the thing looks like. I zoom. That is the Hilbert space film. And it's kind of strange. It's a really interesting pattern. And the print, I think, is lovely. Yeah. I wonder if there is an entrance. Yeah, there's, a, there's a, an entry up here. I guess you can enter any place. I know. What's the way in? 
Is it space related? Yeah, oh wow. Yeah, you can zoom. When you get in, you can go in here. You can go in here and go all the way up to the middle. But it doesn't go very far, but then it does. I'm going to have to like, fill in the curve or something. Just maybe just, so I'll maybe give it to my little helper. Fill the curve for us. So there we go. The helper. This is going pretty well. I'm going to load up another one and then come read the chat. Let's load up another piece of paper. That looks good. Sit back down here and look at these again. I want to plot pentaplexity. Um, so let's try this one and plot again and then go back here. So it says, yeah, hey. Uh, the other challenge is a single wire serial bus. So transmit and receive are on the same pin. A one wire serial bus. So transmit and receive are on the same pin. That is a little inconvenient. My goodness. Yeah. Using a Teen Z35, which is 5 volt tolerant. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I love the Teen Zs. And serial is a weird baud rate. Well, are you sure? Um, how, what's the board rate? Because I had problems with the teletype that I couldn't go slow enough. Um, th with the hardware you are, um, I'm using a Team Z32, I think. And it didn't go slow enough to do 110 board. Um, oh, it's. This thing is the same, there's an error. I may have to. Yeah, I didn't reset to the beginning. So. Yeah. Let's see if it prints. Um, interesting. Yeah, I, I ended up having to do the, the software serial and hacked the Outsoft serial to work best I could. Um, and there's a fork of it on my GitHub, but it was really painful and I don't have like a logic analyzer or anything that would make it easy to debug. Whoa! 187060. Wow. Oh, that's not bad. That's like fast, but weird. Fast is good. Weird is always good. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Uh, I think I've queued that up for print. Let's see if it actually prints. Salaya clones are cheap. What's a Salaya? I don't know what a Salaya is. Some fancy machinery, I hope. <laughs> you missed but okay. <laughs> so I can't Google it. <laughs> My plotter seems to have busted. Come on, what's going on with the plotter? What is going on with the plotter? Uh, let's go have a look at it. Um, status none. Well, that's okay. I'm going to have to put timestamps in my log or something. Oh, no, no, address already in use is okay, that's expected. Well. Is it running? It's running HPGL care. And 
I guess I'm just going to kill that. How big's that file? Some of these plot files are pretty big. This one's tiny. USB logic analyzer device set comparable compatible to Salei. That is pretty awesome. Wow, okay. Yeah, this is like a, a whole level of competence that I'm not wired for right now. <laughs> My electronics capability is stuck in the 70s <laughs> as well as on my hardware. <laughs> uh, I have a, a crappy scope, but actually my neighbor here has a nice a nice desk scope. Uh, but again, it's not like super modern. Um, what? What? USB logic analyzer device set, compatible to sell a 24 megs 8 channel, $6.29. Okay. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's going to change my life. Wow. That's totally going to change my life. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Wow. If I had one of those when I was hacking on the serial port for the teletype. <laughs> Wow. Oh, that's cool. That's very cool. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Nice, nice pointer. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go debug this thing. Unfortunately, software, not hardware. And um, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of a software guy, and and so I tend to fix things in software, even when you should really fix it in hardware, just to be do things right. <laughs> so, um, that plot was really small. Uh, I'm not there. I'm ignoring that one. Um, I was going to just kill this arbitrarily, but it's still running. It's still running HPGL cat. And I think I have to kill it. 15282. Okay. And uh, let's look at the log. There's nothing new in the log. I don't think it's queued. I think I'm just gonna like plot it again. But this is not gonna work if it's like an unattended printer and I'm expecting normal passers by to go print with it. If it hangs. And if, like, turning the power off doesn't fix it, um, turning the power off to the plotter doesn't fix it. Um, so that queued. And it's not running the print HPGL worker. And there's nothing new in the log. So what's up with the printer? It doesn't like it. Maybe I should have just used cups instead of writing my own. <laughs> I would have got LP for free. Um, hmm. Well, what's up with that? I mean, I can always just kill the printer, the, the, the IPP server. Because um, it'll start back up again. There's a, there's a cron job that, that restarts it. Hmm. Or I could just restart it by hand. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that is interesting. Why? Well, 
What? HomePie? That's not what it says. It says HomePie slash HPGL. That thing here says HomePie HPGL data. And I paste it in here and it says HomePie HPGL data. Right? There's nothing about HomePie IPP server. Oh! Oh, isn't that weird? I got a bug. I got a bug in my Python. But why did I not get that error when it's running from Chrome? HomePy, HPGL data. So I'm pointing at this PPD file, and then when it tries to open it, it's getting it wrong. All right. Let's switch back to the IPP server. Because this is... Um, this is annoying me now because I can't print. <laughs> i got to fix bugs before I can get marks put on paper. Those are the worst kind of bugs. Here's the IPP server. I'm on the uh, scratch branch. And somewhere in here, it's going to take like. Uh, so not all this is my code. It's, it makes makes reading things hard. Um, but it takes the the PPD file and then loads it. And I think that probably loads it in the behavior, if I remember. And I don't want to load like PyCharm because I've got no memory and resources on this machine right now. <laughs> But I have to debug that later when I've turned OBS off. Uh, PPD, here's the PPD file. And somewhere I've got like a thing that opens it. Ah, I don't think I can debug that. I think I just have to go like wait until um, wait until this thing wakes up on Chrome. And why does it think IPP server? Oh, there is a IPP server directory. Oh. I know why it is. It's because I'm not running the IPP server directly. It's running it like this. with all this environment. And that's better. Now it's running. So it was looking in the wrong directory because this data directory wasn't set in the environment. Okay, now that we're running the server again, let's go uh, check printers and scanners because it might be just queued locally waiting for the plotter to wake up. Uh, who knows? And on my Mac, I'm still waiting for printers and scanners to arrive. But meanwhile, I'll send that thing out to the printer. Hmm. Nothing's plotting. Nothing's plotting yet. <laughs> oh. All right. Pen plot one dot local. Open the print queue. And it's beak balling again. Oh. Hey, there we are. I see some flutter machinery. Yes. All right. And sure enough, it had actually just queued all three copies that I printed. Yay.
So here's this pentaplexity thing, which is actually super fast and super small. Um, it's it's not a big complex. I missed the first few minutes. What's the issue with the teletype? Yeah, it's not on the Wi-Fi. <laughs> and I don't have a hardwired cable going into it right now. So um, I have to plug in USB into the Raspberry Pi thing that's powering it. But the Raspberry Pi thing that's powering it is in the pedestal, conveniently. And now that I've moved a little, the pedestal is against the wall. The pedestal is pressed against the wall, and the uh, feet are uh, right in the way of my camera tripod, and so it's like, oh no, <laughs> when this is not on the Wi-Fi, I have to go, um, yeah, <laughs> well, I need a console, this is my console, <laughs> but yeah, I need to wire up a USB-C connector to the actual console for the, for the device. Let's have a look at the template that we've printed. And uh, that's pretty good. I think that's kind of nice. Let's try to print something again. I think maybe pentaplexity number two, because I didn't cancel that out of the print job. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I gotta go fix the teletype serial thing at some point. Um, I am totally getting rich on Etsy revenue. Uh, revenue. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lost leader. <laughs> Make it up on volume. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know it's funny. I I like the whole like. Let's pretend to be a business here. Yeah. And this isn't even printing. For some reason, it's got the pen up. Which is quite a relief, actually. Yeah. I'm okay with just one side of this. Single sided pentaplexity print. And it's beautiful. Alright. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to call it a day now. And um, uh, see if I can fix that bug that was causing it to um, sit around. I don't know. <laughs> um, anyway, have a, have have a look at some of these other uh, uh, L system files because there's a whole bunch of really beautiful ones. Um, the ferns. Oh, the ferns are amazing. I've got to do some more friends. Um, let's fire this up. Uh, uh, file L slash fern. No. Leaf. Let's do the leaf. This, I think, is a big print. We'll see. So yeah, there's some stability problems still with, like, something caused that to flake and forget that it was printing and uh, whatever. Still with it, I guess. <laughs> so I'm going to zoom you back in. See what's on the desk. It is printing it. Yeah, and then there's a bunch of stuff actually still to do on the cosmetics of this thing. Um, the garbage bag behind it, that's not part of the, the platter. Uh, oh my god. Are you serious? Uh, look at this. this is a different level. Let's have a look at 
I've put too many iterations on the print here. I think uh, we've got more than enough. Because this is going to fill the whole page with tiny, tiny leaf things. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it's going to... It's going to take its time. So yeah, the, the uh, rest of the plan here. Um, uh, I've got this amazing, amazing signal generator that looks beautiful and has the best knobs in the world. Really, like stunning quality machined aluminum knobs, and it's a sweet generator. And it goes up to 100 kilohertz. And it'll sweep up to 10k sweeps. Oh, that's really good. So this is a nice little piece of gear. Um, and apparently it doesn't work. But I can never turn down things like this. So I may have to look at it and make it work. So there's that. I don't have a place to put this. Really? Yes. Um, I guess the bottom shelf. Nope. Nope. Can't put it on the bottom shelf. There's a uh, deck console sitting on the bottom shelf. Let's put this over there. Uh, yeah. What else? My other projects include actually just printing some ASCII art on the teletype and framing it. And, uh, yeah. If I had the, the chat working on the teletype, I would just, like, get on with framing stuff and occasionally chat on the teletype. Um, but I can't stand here, over here, and read the screen. <laughs> So I just let it run, and uh, if I if, if you say anything, I probably won't notice for a little while. But that's okay. It's quick. software project to this. Um, when it was printing emojis, that's great. And this one, great. But the aspect ratios are wrong. So, um, maybe you should have the plotter write you a note to remind you, bring the right cable next time. Ha 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 ha. No, no, I have a cable. I actually have the USB-C cable 
it's just I, I recently moved my all my workstation stuff from one part of the brickyard to the other and um, now my cables are in a box I'm going to find which box um, yeah I like this layout I'm just not like really um, good at it yet Supplies over here. Uh, telephone stuff up here. Mm -hmm. Nice recycled gift cards and envelopes. Oh, there we go. There. I'm going to print on those with um, punch tape. So, yeah, the, the software, the other software problem that I have to fix is this uh, aspect ratio. For some reason, if I'm printing PDF, then the aspect ratio comes out all the way. So I want to fix that because I want people random passive by in this place to be able to just um, connect to Wi-Fi and print whatever they have and it's gonna come out as PDF. Yeah, I need stickies. I need yellow stickies for uh, and flat surfaces. There's neither. <laughs> There's none of neither around here. Yeah, and some way to recycle all of my random test prints. But my goodness, this leaf. I have to show you. There's something really chintzy about that leaf. It's um, like the thing. And there it is again. About as optically zoomed as we can get. This print is astonishingly nice. Alright, so these go in the recycle. Doing the right thing. Well, while I'm printing, I should just do some more teletype action because because I can even without like Wi-Fi. I think I can do teletype. Uh, let's go look it up online first because that's always faster than navigating, well, usually faster, than navigating around the directory structure with the teletype itself. So under ASCII art, under MISC pictures, I have, yeah, I have the minion that I want to print again. So I'm going to do a little bit of printing here. I'll do a minion and a uh, and a Mario uh, yeah I'm going to leave the pocket in down while I get there um, What 
directory is this in? So it's in this picture. A photograph, yay! Let's open that in a little window. this weird buffery thing. Um, so I want to cat minion.png.text. Let's see if it works. Yeah, 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 it works. Now while that's printing, Well, that's printing. Let's plug up the browser. We'll write a project. Oh my goodness me! Wow, it's beautiful. That is an amazing piece of gear. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. It looks super clean, and it has like like um, modern IBM Model M kind of keyboard with a split space key, with a split space bar, and no cursor keys. But who needs cursor keys, huh? That's really pretty, and you can just about see the print wheel, I guess. <coughs> Can you get replacement uh, ribbons for it? Well, that looks neat. That's a very neat piece of work. Wow. Wow. It's like super modern. Yeah. So the digital terminal that I'm uh, sitting next to here, um, the uh, Deck Rider 4, uh, is a similar era. Yeah, the Deck Rider 4 is like early 80s or turn of the 80s. Um, and so I'm expecting similar kinds of electronics within it. Like, I can get with that kind of electronics, like, no surface mount. <laughs> Devices you can see, uh, like, test points you can actually hit with a, without a microscope. <laughs> but, yeah, I can kind of work with that. Maybe. On a good day. Yeah, that's really beautiful machine. I think it looks really pretty. And, uh, and it looks like an amazing project. All right, how's my uh, minion coming on? Minion is doing okay. Minion is doing just great. I wonder, like in the mid '80s. I know. I I, I guess I remember working with Daisy Wheels because we had one at the place I was working in, like, 1987. We had one Daisy Reel typewriter that was used for, like, formal letters. But even invoices and, like, even, like, business stuff was coming out on really terrible dot matrix printers. Because it was quite expensive to get, like, letter-quality print. And 
those crappy dot matrix. Oh, I'm glad I don't have one of those. But a, a daisy wheel with a nice type on it, that's a special thing. <coughs> How's Minion doing? He's doing okay. Yeah, Minion's doing great. A conference called Teardown. Yeah, nice. In Portland, Oregon. Nice. Yeah, I'm hoping to make it to VCF East. My plan. Um, I don't have anything else to do that weekend. It's a bit of a drive from, from Massachusetts, but it'll be so worth it. And Tim Thompson's talking. It's the Unix thing. Now that the menu's kind of recognizable, I think the menu's halfway printed. The, um, the fern has moved on to the next leaf. It's turned over a new one. And it's insanely slow print. Insanely slow print. And there's some people on uh, that I find on the Potter stuff who are doing just really beautiful art prints. But some of the Potter work is really exhibition quality. Yeah, really, really beautiful. So I aspire to stuff like that.
smells wonderful. Yeah, totally, totally. The 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 clickety clank and, uh, and the oil smell with this little piece of paper roll. The the oil smell that comes off the tape. Oh, it's it's just beautiful. <laughs> I wonder if it has the same effect on people who didn't experience it as a teenager or a young person. Because, I mean, I, I sat with one of these um, in high school. So I was like 15 and hacking on a teletype. And so I have that, like, the, the olfactory memory takes back that far. But it's funny, I mean, I want to have kids use this for real things. That's really the, the purpose of being around here. And, um, and they don't have that experience. Oh, the Dr. Matrix sounds. Oh, yeah. That, the high-pitched thing. At this point, though, I'm going to sign off for real, <laughs> because it's time for me to... I don't I can't go home. I've got to wait for my print to, to happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, I've, I've had fun tonight. I wasn't sure if I was going to, because, <laughs> you know, like, too much problem solving and not enough mini imprinting. Um, but, yeah. Uh, now, the thing to do on on Twitch, and i got to figure this out. Um, the thing to do on Twitch when you sign off is go raid somebody else's channel. And um, let's see, who is live? Adafruit is live on Ask an Engineer. Uh, oh, Riot Retro Gaming is doing Commodore 64. Com no, Commodore Radio, that's kind of... Yeah, it's just radio. Um, there's a bunch of people doing... Uh, yeah. Gamey stuff. Yeah. Mm, nobody to raid. I was hoping that Eric would be online um, with his Olivetti machine. Um, but he's not. But one day, Eric and I will... will organize a raiding party so that we'll do the Olivetti and the Teletype Bake Off. <laughs> anyway, thanks for hanging out. I'm going to sign off. Uh, good chatting with you. Uh, wonderful Will Rider project. I'm, I'm super impressed. Uh, anyway, take care. See ya.